Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We are chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. Now Jordan, look, we're going to talk about the precious metals and unfortunately the precious metals continue to be under pressure and now instead of looking to the upside around 2000, a lot of investors are now looking to the downside around, well, where in the 1800s is this correction going to slow or at least stop because gold in a matter of six days gave up uh, over a hundred dollars now again it is still close to 1800 or 1900 but uh, it's flying in the face of a lot of gold bugs and commentators that were saying look higher inflation should be driving gold higher we have potential for a recession boy oh boy we hear a lot about potential recession and again gold continues to correct one thing that i think is important is to balance out where inflation stands, where the gold price stands. You recently have done some research in this. Break down the changes that we've seen in inflation and then underline the gold price. Well, it's really interesting, Corey, because the rate of inflation has gone from about 1% to 8.5%. And that when, inflate, when statistical inflation started moving up, so it bottomed, I think, right around the COVID crash low, moved up a little bit, then it made a second low right around the time of summer 2020 when gold and silver peaked. And so gold and silver have been in this large correction since then. And inflation's gone up to eight, eight and a half percent and gold and silver have not broken out and made new highs. They've been in this larger, you know, correction slash consolidation. And part of the reason for that is if you look at real interest rates, like if you look at the real five-year yield, uh, that bottomed in the end of Q1, so about a year ago, Q1 last year, so about a year ago was when real interest rates bottomed. Now, they didn't start rising until the last three or four months, at least rising aggressively. But you know, real interest rates had made this bottom, so they stopped going down. And that pretty much explains, because if you look at the last three or four or five months, they have been moving up uh, pretty aggressively. And so that explains why gold and silver have been unable to break out and have remained in this correction. I mean, the correlation has been really strong other than if we look at where gold and silver peaked in summer of 2020, real interest rates bottomed about, you know, four or five months after that. So that's the only period where they kind of diverged. And one could say, well, gold and silver should have gone up for another three, four or five months. And then also recently, I mean, real interest rates started to move up right before the, uh, invasion and, and gold and silver were holding up really well but you know real interest rates at least in the last month or two have started to move up pretty aggressively and so that's coincided with the recent decline that we've seen so it's it's all about real interest rates and at the same time it's also about stagflation and you know i i saw a good tweet on twitter looking at information and we know that the 70s stagflation gold and silver did really well the stock market didn't do as well but i mean how do you really define stagflation it's more than just high inflation i mean it's according to this data it's high inflation it's economic growth slowing it's unemployment rising and so if you look at that um, yes we have rising inflation but we don't have rising unemployment yet and if, if you look at slowing growth we haven't really had that at least if you look at the last four or five quarters there hasn't been slowing growth yet. Now we're likely to see that I think in the coming quarters. And so the market has started to discount that. And that's, you know, in part why gold in real terms, you know, it's perked up against the S and P 500 in the last couple months, but we're not in a full blown stagflation environment yet, you know, and we probably will be later in the year. And that's when growth is really slowing. And when unemployment or unemployment or employment has stopped rising, then you're in more of a stagflation environment which is best for gold and also if we look at even if we just look at you know the 2016 to 2018 period you know after gold and silver peaked in 2016 inflation went up a little bit the other commodities performed much better and then in 2018 gold and silver gold especially and even gold stocks they bottomed when inflation peaked in the summer of 2018 and that was four months before the Fed did their last hike and then, you know, they decided they were going to go to cuts. And then, you know, we had this big move in the sector, you know, gold made that breakout of 1375. So we're, we're lining up for a similar point where the rate of inflation is going to peak in the coming months. It's going to roll over. That's probably going to coincide with the Fed 
stopping its rates. And, you know, eventually they're going to turn to cuts. And that's going to be the scenario that gets precious metals moving again, not only in you know nominal terms, but real terms as well. So there, there's a lot of nuance. I mean, it's not that complicated, but I mean, it comes back to real interest rates. And also the fact that for most of the period, you know, the economy has been doing okay. You've still been adding jobs and, you know, growth hasn't slowed that much yet. But I think looking at these factors, once we get to the second half of the year, the conditions for precious metals are going to trend. They're going to start trending really bullish, but we're just, we're not quite there yet. Jordan, some good points there. And I think that with the uh, inflation part of the component, a lot of people mentioned that gold in 2019 and even in 2020, when it made that big run, was already sniffing out that inflation would be coming because of all the money printing. And so one could argue that the markets are forward looking. Same thing with stagflation. People have been looking at the slowdown growth estimates for the last six months coming into 2022 from 2021. So a lot of people were looking at that in advance, the markets being forward looking and saying, hey, stagflation's on the horizon. So I think that could explain some of the movements, but I'd love you to unpack and you just mentioned it, but just unpack it a little bit more for our audience about uh, during a rate hiking cycle, typically there's the sell off before it and then it rallies as things develop, but not necessarily right away. But this one was different because we had a big rally in gold just recently. I mean, it just hit 2000 just a month ago. So it's not like it's been in the, the crap or anything. Gold has been doing pretty good, all things considered, and has been gaining on the S&P. But that happened before the rate hike cycle started a lot of it. And the rate hike cycle just started in March. So now gold is correcting as the rate hike cycle starts. That kind of flies in the face of a lot of the narrative we've been hearing. So I'd love you to unpack how you see it unfolding as this rate hiking cycle develops. Yeah, I mean, if you look at gold going up with rate hikes and rising interest rates, that did happen in the 70s. It also happened for part of the mid 2000s. But whether it's those scenarios or it's a disinflationary scenario, in all those scenarios, I think in all but one going back the last 50 years or so, gold made a significant bottom when the cycle started. But as I pointed out, when we were talking about that, if people will remember, you know, gold and silver made these big declines into that low when they started hiking rates. Gold didn't do that this time. Instead of going below 1700, like I was thinking, you know, it, it went up and it, and it, you know, it went up 300 bucks in six weeks and it peaked at the beginning of the cycle. So that changed the assessment. And of course, you know, we look at real interest rates. So this this is more, it's setting up more similar to the cycles of the last 20 years where, you know, gold, the first bottom was when the cycle started. Then it kind of went, you know, depending on the cycle, it went sideways, sold off a little bit, went up a little bit throughout the hikes. But then when the hikes ended, then gold got into position to really move. And so that's that's what it's setting up for here again. I mean, it's, selling off it's lost 1900 basically it's going to close the month below 1900 so you know that's a a false breakout above 1900 because the market is right now is disc you know real interest rates are rising the market is discounting a really tight fed at least for the next three months there's like a 65 percent chance of 1.75 percent increase in the next three meetings so the end of july you could have rates at two or 2.25 percent then it'll get interesting after that point. But once, you know, we get past the summer, if the economy still looks like it's slowing and inflation is rolling over a little bit, there's some more problems. The market is going to start discounting the Fed ending its cycle. And that's going to be good for gold because also, you know, when the Fed does its shift and they start cutting again, you know, real interest rates, they tend to peak at the end of the cycle and also they tend to peak around the time the yield curve inverts so that's another issue is if the yield you know look for the yield curve to reinvert at some point in the next three to five months because that's a problem because if long-term bond yields come down to two percent and the fed is at you know 2.5 or 2.75 the curve is going to be super inverted and you know that they're going to have to stop at that point you know i don't want to get too technical but you know, when when you get to that type of situation, that's when the Fed is, you know, th that's around the time that real interest rates peak. And then the Fed has to shift its focus to cuts. And that, you know, when they start cutting, of course, real interest rates start declining again. And so that that's the fundamental setup for gold to do really well. And so we're not quite there yet, but 
it, it, it all comes back to real interest rates. And so they're rising aggressively right now. And I don't think that's going to last for that much longer. I mean, I think gold will probably make a low at some point here in the next month or two, you know, and then maybe stabilize for a month or two after that. And if the Fed stops, then it can, you know, rally back and try and break out again. So it sounds like a bit of a waiting game for the precious metals investors. On top of this Fed rate hiking cycle, we do need to understand that if the Fed does go through a 50 basis point hike, we were looking back at when the last time that happened was and that was back in 2000. So we're 22 years, over 22 years away from that. Bit of a different environment from the last few very short-lived hiking cycles, depending on how long the Fed can go. Jordan, if we drive down into the stocks, though, those have been very disappointing, especially the juniors. There are a number of juniors that are back to levels that they were trading at pre-pandemic. So if you think about the run that some of these juniors went on, a lot of them have given it all back. What's going to change that environment and how devastating is that for the sector broadly as we keep on complaining that no new investors are coming in? You can't blame them. I mean, look, you know, I've been saying 2100, but looking at this latest sell off, the weekly chart of gold, I mean, 2000, it, it, gold has only made one weekly close above 2000. But if you're looking at the weekly chart, you can see just in the last three or four months, there's clear resistance at 2000. So it's going to take gold making and, and I think 2000 is also monthly resistance. So it's going to take a weekly or a monthly close above 2000. That's what it's going to take to get people back in the sector. I mean, my sense is when gold bottoms, I mean, you'll see juniors and silver stocks bottom as well, but they they really need and especially exploration stocks, you know, companies that they're not making money so they consume capital. Those along with silver stocks I mean, they're they're just not going to move that much until gold takes out 2,000 on a weekly and monthly basis. So that that's what it's going to require at this point. You know, g- gold on its way to do all time highs. Quite simply, you know, I'm I'm not a man of few words, but there's nothing else I can say. It's just gold's got to take out 2,000 on a weekly and a monthly basis. And when it does that, then you'll start to see silver and the exploration stocks and a lot of juniors get in position to outperform gold and gold stocks but it's gonna take a little time for that to happen and i i just i i can't see any other reason for or any other answer to the question it just comes down to that because the psychology drives investing and people are not gonna get excited about this sector until gold's basically breaking out to a new all-time high hey sometimes it is best to keep it simple sometimes people try to grasp at too many other reasons as to why it fits their narrative and quite frankly higher prices usually do bring in more investors last time gold popped up there it did stop a bit short so maybe that was why we didn't see a ton of investors come in who knows jordan whatever man we're going to be chatting with you next week we're going to continue to watch these charts and hopefully gold precious metals broadly can find a bottom here sooner rather than later but again it might take time and all eyes now being on the fed and it will be one of the most aggressive rate height cycles that we've seen in over two decades. Jordan, thank you as always for your time, buddy. We'll chat next week.